Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from Home Maker. Friends, rubber plants are also known as Ficus elastica. These plants come in many different colors like this one is Ficus elastica burgundy, this one is Ficus elastica ruby and this one is Ficus elastica teneki and there are many more varieties of Ficus elastica out there in the market. Friends, these plants are well known for their beautiful broad leaves and shiny foliage and they look stunning when they are kept indoor. Um, they can tolerate low light conditions, they are very easy to care for and they are wonderful ornament plant, ornamental plants. Now friends, even though these plants are um, like low maintenance plants, still we might see some of the problems related to the leaf color, uh, related to the uh, leaf you know dropping or leaf drooping or def deformation of the leaves or you know curling of the leaves and many other problems with our ficus elastica. So in this video we will be talking uh, about some of these problems, what could be the root cause of these problems and what we can do um, to fix those problems. So please stay with us till the end of this video. Problem number one is stunted growth. Now friends, in many of the vlogs and blogs I have read and heard that these plants, Ficus elastica, are low light tolerant plants. So friends, first thing is that these plants are tropical plants and they prefer bright indirect light now you can keep them in a low light condition they will be fine but keeping them in the low light condition is going to affect the growth of these plants they will not grow very quickly the growth will be very slow and that now you must keep this, these plants in either the uh, north or a south facing window where it can receive um, at least six hours of bright indirect light um, to make sure that your plant growth is not affected by the low light condition. Now the stunted growth can also be caused by um, the root bounding. So the, if, your, if you think that your plant is root bound then please repot your plant once in a year during the spring or summer season. While you uh, are repotting your plant, change the soil, add a little bit of compost in it or worm castings in it or a little bit of fertilizer to make sure that your plant or the soil has got that nutrition which is necessary for the growth of your plant. A problem number two is that the leaves are folding like a taco, like they are curling up like a taco. Now friends, this could be um, most likely a watering issue. So if you are not watering your ficus elastica or your rubber plant regularly, regularly does not mean that you are over watering your plant. Regularly means that you are watering when the top half of the soil is drying out. Then you water your ficus elastica. So if you, you are under watering your ficus, then it's the natural uh, you know, phenomena of the plant to curl up its leaves to prevent the loss of the remaining moisture from the leaves. So that's the reason why the leaves are curling up. So what you have to do is make sure that you check the soil before you water it. If you think that the top half of the soil has uh, dried out, please go ahead and water your um, rubber plant. And uh, for doing that, you can, for checking the soil, the best method would be to stick your finger into the soil and then feel the moisture. If you can feel the moisture in the soil, that means uh, the soil is, you don't need to water it, maybe for a couple of few more days and then reassess the soil. And if the soil is dry, go ahead and um, water your plant. You can also make use of a chopstick if you think that the pot is too deep and you cannot reach the top half of the pot. You can make use of a chopstick as well to check the moisture level. Now there is one more question that whether we can miss the leaves of a plant. Well, yes, you can miss the leaves of your plant. If you think that the air around your area is too dry, you can miss the leaves, but you need to be very careful that your the leaf does not uh, get attacked by the fungal or bacterial growth because you know when the moisture is sitting on top of the leaves it's a good place for the fungus and bacteria to sit and attack um, the plant so just make sure that that's not happening and uh, but the thing is that if you are watering your plant regularly then even if you don't miss the plants the plants will be still happy 
So just water your plant regularly and you will see that your plant is recovering from that tackle situation. So the next problem is that the leaves are turning yellow and then brown and then falling over. Now this problem is also related to improper watering. Now either you are over watering your plant or you are under watering your plant. So if you are over watering your plant, what you have to do is first check the soil. So if the soil is too wet, too much moisture is there in the soil, then you repot your plant to prevent the development of root rot. When you are changing the soil, when you are repotting your plant, uh, just inspect the root system as well. Just see whether the roots are still healthy or they have started developing root rot. If you see any black or brownish roots, just chop them off and then repot your plant uh, in a fresh soil and this time make sure you do not overwater your plant. And if you think that you have underwatered and your plant is bone dry, then please uh, be mindful of being regular with the watering routine and do not overwater it. Check the soil before you water. When the top half dries out, then you water your plant. The next problem is that the leaves are turning black and then falling off. Now this um, stage is the next stage of what we mentioned in the previous problem that the leaves are turning yellow and then brown and then falling over. Now if the leaves are turning black and then falling over that means your plant has started developing root rot. Now to solve this problem you should repot your plant, change the soil, assess the root system inspect your roots uh, the root system of the plant thoroughly and if you see any brown or black roots cut them off give the root system a good wash and then repot your plant in a fresh pot and the fresh soil and this time make sure that you water your plant very carefully and not to overwater your plant our next point is the brown spots on the foliage now this could be caused by the bacterial or fungal infection attacking your plant. Now the bacterial or fungal infection, they can happen if your plant is sitting in very poor conditions. Like if your plant is sitting in a wet soil for a long period of time, there is not enough circulation in the room, air circulation in the room, and the lighting conditions are very poor. So all these things can encourage the growth of bacteria or fungus in the soil and on the plant foliage. Now to solve this problem, make sure that all these factors are removed, like move your plant to a brighter spot where it receives bright indirect light. Make sure that the air circulation in the room is good. Now that does not mean that you place your plant next to a window or a door where the cold drafts are coming and going. That can also be very dangerous for the plant. Just make sure that the room is you know, quite airy. And um, the other thing is that the soil is not soaking wet. It can be moist, but not soaking wet. You don't overwater your plant. Make sure that the saucer, the plant saucer is dry. It's, it's not having uh, water in it. So just make sure that you remove all these uh, factors and your plant will recover. Now to get rid of that fungal and bacterial spots or the brown spots from the foliage, you can use hydrogen peroxide solution or baking soda solution. I have made a separate video on both of them. Um, I'll leave the link in the description box for your reference uh, if you want to find out what, uh, what's the you know, composition of mixture that you need to make to get rid of those fungal and bacterial spots. Uh, please go ahead and watch that video. The next point is that the leaves are having tiny white spots on the outer edges of it. Now, uh, my plant has also got these uh, tiny white uh, spots on, you know, on the outer edges of the leaves. Now, this is basically caused by, uh, you know, the cal calcium carbonate crystals that are formed inside. Now, it could also, you know, be the mineral deposits as a result of the photosynthesis uh, that the plant leaves do. Now, the, you don't need to worry about these uh, spots too much because they are not very harmful for the plant. Uh, they come by itself, they disappear by themselves, so you don't need to worry much. Probably you water your plant regularly so that any of those mineral deposits or soil deposits can get flushed away from the soil and they don't sit um, in the leaves. Now the next point is that the leaves are curling up and they are droopy. 
Now this problem is also related to the watering issue. Either you are under watering your plant or you are over watering your plant. So if you are under watering your plant, please be consistent with the watering routine. Check the soil before you water. If the soil is dry, go ahead and water your plant. Don't let them to be bone dry. It's going to affect the health and growth of these plants. But if you have overwatered your plant, the plant is wet for a long period of time, then make sure that you check the soil before you water. Water only if the topsoil dries out. If the soil is too wet for a long period of time, just repot your plant, assess the roots, and then um, fix that uh, you know, problem. Now, the plant being wet for a long period of time, you need to uh, consider other aspects as well. Whether your plant is sitting in a very large pot. Now, larger pot means more soil and more soil means it will absorb more water. And now if your plant is small, it will not be able to absorb all that water very quickly. So which means that your plant will be sitting in that wet soil for a long time. So make sure that you uh, take the size of the pot which is okay for that size of the plant don't take a very big pot for a normal sized plant so the thing is that um, you have you have kept your plant in a low light condition now in the low light condition the plant will not photosynthesize very quickly so which means that it will not absorb that water quickly as well and which is one more reason that your plant will not grow quickly if it's sitting in the low light condition for a long time so move your plant in a brighter spot and that will uh, you know encourage the plant to photosynthesize more because it's receiving more light and it will be able to absorb more water and grow healthy and happy the next aspect that you need to consider that your plant is sitting in the excess of water now you need to be very mindful of uh, you know draining or discarding the excess water from the plant saucer and not let the pot sit in that uh, saucer containing the discarded water because that will keep the soil wet for a long period of time which will again cause uh, root rot to the plant. Another point to consider is that the pot has got enough of drainage holes. Now if your pot has got only one or two drainage holes then your plant uh, will be sitting in the wet soil. The water will not be able to drain out completely. Make sure you repot your plant in a pot which has got enough of drainage holes if the pot has not that much you can even you know make uh, the drainage holes yourself at home and then um, for the excess of water to seep through now if you think that you have taken care of all these aspects but still the leaves are curling up and still they are droopy then you need to consider the temperature conditions. So if you think that your plant is sitting in a cold room where the temperature is very low and, or the plant is um, sitting where it receives cold or hot drafts next to a door or a window or an AC vent or a heater or something like that then you need to move your plant away from all those you know cold and hot areas and make sure that the room temperature is maintained another thing is that the plant leaves also curl up if the air around is too dry so if the air around is too dry and you're not watering your plant consistently then also they will curl up so just make sure that you water regularly you don't need to mist you don't need to you know provide a lot of humidity to these plants they can survive in the normal average humidity as well um, the only thing to make sure is that the soil is nice and moist problem is that there are brown edges on the variegated um, varieties now the variegated varieties like taneki or ruby they are very sensitive to uh, you know the sunlight so even if you provide the bright indirect light to these plants and they are sitting in that indirect light for a very long time the corners of these plants start to crisp up so even if it's bright indirect light move it a little bit more away from that bright indirect light so that in intensity and the heat is not uh, that much for the plant so that the plant leaves they don't dry out they don't get scorched or sunburned direct sunlight is a complete no-no for these plants because it can burn the leaves of your plant 
Brown edges can also be caused by inconsistent watering. So if again the air is too dry, the water, the you are underwatering your plant, that can also cause the corners of the leaves um, to turn brown and crispy. So just make sure that you keep these two things in mind. First is the lighting, next is the watering, and you will not see any brown edges on your leaf on, on your plant. Next problem is deformed leaves. Now there are three reasons why your plant leaves could be deformed. First thing is the nutrition deficiency. So if your plant, you're not fertilizing your plant enough, especially during the growing season, spring or summer season, um, and your plant is malnourished, that can cause the, you know, the newer leaves to get deformed or the newer leaves to be shorter than the previous leaves. So for that, make sure that you fertilize your plants during the spring and summer season once monthly with a complete liquid fertilizer. Another is the uh, pest attack so you expect your plant thoroughly if you see any sort of pest like mealybugs, scales, thrips, uh, white flies, spider mites or uh, fungus gnats or any sort of pest uh, you can use neem oil solution to get rid of all those pests you can make use of hydrogen peroxide solution baking soda solution as well to get rid of all those pests give your plant a good wash spray it with neem oil solution and you will see the pest running away from your plants. The third reason for deformity of the leaves could be improper care. So if you are neglecting your plant, you're not watering it consistently or you are over watering your plant and the plant is not receiving enough of light, the humidity is too dry and all these factors uh, together can cause the malformation of the leaves or deformity on the leaves or you know the leaves with no variegations and all that stuff so just make sure that you if you are keeping house plants you take care of now i would just like to end up the video by two tips first thing is to keep your uh, rubber plants clean keep the foliage clean now you can make use of the baking soda solution as well to wipe down the leaves of your plant um, half a teaspoon of baking soda in one liter of water spray it on top of the leaves and keep them clean now first thing is that it will help to uh, you know it will prevent the development of fungal or bacterial growth on the plant and the other thing is that if the leaves of your plant are clean the dust is not sitting on the leaves of the plant your plant will be able to photosynthesize well and the better your plant photosynthesizes the better the health of your plant will be the next tip is that be very mindful when you are using a moisture meter to assess the moisture level. Many of the times I have seen and I have heard people, um, you know, harming their plants and, you know, their plants dying because they were underwatering your plant or they overwatered their plant uh, because of the wrong or false readings from the moisture meter. The best way is to trust your senses and check the soil using your finger see the soil whether it looks dry or it looks moist you can also make use of the chopstick leave the chopstick for 10 to 15 minutes in the soil when the uh, when the chop bamboo chopstick it soaks the water you can see whether the soil is moist or wet or it's dry you your finger you know you can your touch senses can tell you whether the soil is dry or not so don't just rely on all those devices they can be accurate they cannot be accurate so just don't blame kindly follow them friends i hope you enjoyed watching this video if you have any plant problems uh, please do let us know by commenting in the comment section and we will get back to you as soon as possible and i will see you next time with another exciting video till then stay safe happy gardening bye bye